Hey guys, I um, I was going through my uh, comments section and somebody left a comment about this this Umbral Home device, saying that a um, a teardown, a, a you know, a, like a teardown like I've done on other devices, uh, would have been helpful. And at first I was like, would it though? Um, but then I, I decided to uh, do a, go ahead and, and tear it down. Like I've already already taken the back off of it. Here is here's that hard drive. In fact, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna switch over to this other camera here. And so this you can see maybe you can see I don't know if the focus is great with the everything. Um, anyway, the the this 2242 whatever uh, NVMe drive is is branded Umbral. I feel that was unnecessary and probably cost them a lot of money they didn't need to spend. And and I was like, well, that's that's interesting, you know, whatever. I it is what it is. So it was four screws to hold in the bottom, you know, which I've got over here, um, you know, right right here. There you go. Um, just hit, tore the feet off, took the screws out, just like you do with anything else. Um, then there were four more screws to get to the next layer. And once I did that, I was able to pop this thing apart. And it's it is. I will say it's it's fairly well tabbed together. <laughs> Um, and here, here we can see there, we've got some, oops. So we've got our, our wireless uh, antennas there. We've got our, our cooler there. Um, you know, that the seems to do a pretty, a pretty good job. Maybe I should zoom out. Let me, oh, that was the wrong way. Let's zoom out. Come on, a little bit. There we go. All right. And, and then uh, I, I was able to, I wiggled this out a little bit. Do you see that? Do you see that? That... Oops, here, let's do this. That's an HDMI port. Uh, it's probably hard to see right there, but there, there is an HDMI port on this board uh, and they chose to hide it for some reason. Um, I don't know what that reason is. I will probably reach out to them and ask them what the reason was for hiding the HDMI port. Um, but um, that, doesn't, that doesn't give me the feel goods. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this back in and see if it puts out uh, any sort of HDMI uh, signal. And uh, we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I've got my HDMI plugged in. Um, uh, yeah, HDMI cable down there on the Umbral device. Uh, there's there's the, see it's all, it's all still one unit there. So I'm gonna plug in my USB-C here for the power and uh, I guess we're gonna see what happens. There's there's our Umbral logo uh, that's being output from the HDMI port. There is Grub. Um, huh. All right, so our Umbral user is Umbral. Um, and then the password is whatever password we use to log in to the desktop. So we're gonna do that. And, uh, and now we're logged in. Um, and just just so we're all on the same page here, oops, fan fans there. Um, here I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this over so we can so we can see this right. This is this is our Umbral device um, with a with an Umbral uh, M.2 drive there. Um, so this is this is what I'm holding. Back to my camera setting there. I'm gonna unplug this and it's gone. So this board um, right here, oops, right here, right there, there is our, our, our HDMI. It looks like it's actually gonna spot for two more HDMIs there. We've got our three USBs. Again, that umbral there, we've got our battery for, for BIOS and whatnot. It does have an extra spot for an additional uh, ethernet port. So this has got the potential to have a lot more with regards to uh, IO than, than, we were, than we were given. And I have to wonder why. So I'm gonna reach out to him, and once I hear back, I will I will continue this video. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and was able to uh, obviously boot into the BIOS here, um, and we can see uh, kind of what's going on here. We've got our build date and time, which was you know exactly six months ago today, actually. Uh, Umbral Umbral Home. We've got our serial ID number, UUID. Couple of SATA options in there that I'm not, I'm not seeing, but that that's whatever. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, Intel 50 or Celeron 5105. 
Uh, that's all. That's all. We we knew all of that already. Uh, system date and time. Eh, it's on. It's. I mean, yeah. It's like seven hours ahead. It's whatever. CPU configuration. So they do have virtualization turned on. That's something. Hardware monitor. Uh, looks like we can. Uh, we can adjust the fan settings. So I, I kind of dig that. I appreciate that that's there. Uh, we've got our Realtek PCI controller there. Uh, the driver release was seven, seven, eight, eight years ago. That's whatever. Again, it's just a very generic Realtek PCIe controller. Uh, driver health, um, that's fine. Again, that's interesting. Is that a two and a half gig ethernet controller? Huh. That's that's interesting. Um, nothing there. Okay. Security. Uh, we don't want to do any of this. We can see that the uh, we've got an NVMe SSD two terabyte in there. With we've got secure boot as an option. Boot. Uh, quiet boot enabled. Wake on power. Um, system on state. Um, oh, we can change the LED color settings. Ooh, to other colors. Heck yeah, that's brilliant. I want. Blue. Wake on LAN enabled, I dig that. Pixie boot is optional, but disabled. Uh, it does have a TPM uh, that is enabled, so you could use that if you wanted to. Uh, we've got some boot options. Um, presently, I don't think, I think it's giving me this because I don't have another drive in, uh, plugged in like via USB or whatever. Um, do, do, do. So, oh wait. Push button reset, interesting. So it looks like there are definitely uh, some things in here we can do, but we're gonna leave most of it as they are. We're gonna save changes and exit and save configuration and exit and click okay. So yeah, that um, that is what the BIOS of the uh, the Umbral Home looks like. Uh, we've already logged in, we've taken a look at, at that. Um, <clears throat> but I did, I did reach out to the folks at Umbral. Um, let me switch over to here uh, and then let me go find my Gmail account, because I want to make sure I get this right. I don't want to misrepresent um, anything I said or what they said or whatever. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to read what I wrote here. I'll put it up on the screen when I edit here. But uh, I said, hey, just wanted to touch base on the, uh, again about the Umbral Home. As you saw in the comments, a lot, or lots of people were pretty frustrated with the lack of display output options on the device. One user mentioned that a teardown would have been nice just to see what we're actually working with. I, for my own reasons, assumed that the board in the device would look more or less like what you have on your website. Uh, curiosity got the better of me and I decided to do a teardown of the unit that I received and I gotta tell you, I was a bit shocked. Uh, it turns out there is an HDMI port available on the board and two pads to install additional ports. Also, I feel like the custom branding on the M.2 drive was a, uh, an extra expense that not a single consumer would care about and I'm guessing that was an additional cost to you or an additional cost that you then passed on to the consumer. There's also uh, an additional pad to add an additional ether port, which is whatever. But I gotta know why you decided to ship a device that has an HDMI port, but chose not to tell the customers it was there. Uh, this seems a bit sketchy if I'm being honest. I would love a quick response so I can include it in a follow-up that I'm already working on. So that's the email that I sent them uh, at 5.25 p.m. Mountain Time. And, uh, at 6.03 p.m., again, Mountain Time, so less than an hour later, I got a response. I'm gonna read that to you as well, um, and I'm gonna let you decide what, what your thoughts are on what they said here. They said, hey, David, thank you again for your in-depth review and for bringing those concerns to our attention. Totally understand the audience's frustration about no video output, and we truly value this feedback as it'd help us improve in the future. I'm more than happy to provide clarification. The HDMI port you discovered is indeed part of the unit's hardware. However, it's not intended for customers. As of today and for this foreseeable future, neither apps on Umbral, or on Umbral OS or Umbral OS itself plan to use, utilize it for video output. The HDMI port is a crucial component of our production line process and production line workers use the HDMI out to run a suite of tests using a monitor before the PCBA um, pass their QA checks, monitor the test outputs, et cetera, ensuring that every unit we ship is fully functional with the correct hardware components. If there's no video output, it's a bit tricky to reproduce or to produce thousands and thousands of units and have them tested via ethernet. 100% agree with that. This is a common practice in manufacturing to guarantee quality control. 
<clears throat> they continue on with, the question would be, why not expose it if we have it on the PCBA? The answer is because we strive for simplicity. Our target audience isn't tech savvy. Seeing an HDMI out might confuse them into thinking that they need a keyboard, monitor, and mouse to operate it like a PC. This confusion already happens quite a bit for users that set up Umbrella OS server on a Raspberry Pi and hook it to a display expecting the UI to pop up and all they see is the kernel boot logos and the terminal login screen. I understand the end of life concerns or EOL concerns. However, there isn't anything stopping a consumer from taking out the SSD and flashing an alternate OS on it, or even expanding to a larger drive in the future. As you've seen in the teardown, accessing the SSD is fairly straightforward once you remove the bottom lid and doesn't require taking apart anything else. As for the additional pad on the ethernet port, this uh, was a decision we made after the initial PCBA uh, design stage. Originally we considered including dual ethernet, but ultimately opted for a single port. Regarding the custom, branded, uh, the custom branding on the M.2 drive, this decision was made with the intention of shipping an SSD of top notch quality. There aren't many reputable manufacturers that produce a 2242 drives and a two, te two terabyte capacity to ensure we didn't compromise on quality performance and mostly the life of the SSD, we sourced custom drives with a Fizon SSD controller. I hope that clears things up. Once again, I appreciate you or your and your audience's feedback. It's insights like these that fuel our continuous improvement. Please let me know if you have any more questions or need further clarification. We're looking forward to your follow-up. So that is the, the, the message that I sent and their response. Um, I appreciate their response. Um, I got to say a couple of things with regards to that. Um, I, I don't, maybe, maybe I just didn't understand who their target audience was. Um, and, and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Umbral OS is very, very crypto centric. It has a lot of crypto and, 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 and crypto Bitcoin apps installed on it for relays and for wallets and all kinds of stuff that is crypto related. So that put in my head that this device was meant for a tech savvy person, somebody who understood how computers worked and um, had probably already looked at Umbral OS and understood how that worked. Um, I understand that um, the tech or the, the, the crypto Bitcoin side of things isn't the entire operating system, but um, based again on my experience with Umbral OS, when I made that video last year, I, I, I just made the, I guess the incorrect assumption that, that this device was meant for tech savvy people, not the average consumer like my father-in-law who's almost 70. Uh, and maybe it's not for him either. And maybe I'm just missing the mark, but um, but that's that's kind of where it is. I think there was a, a communication or an understanding issue. I didn't understand who their target market was. Their website's very flashy. It's very tech centric. Um, the, again, the OS is very tech centric. Um, so I just made apparently the incorrect assumption that this device wasn't meant for tech savvy people. And in fact, uh, their target audience is apparently not tech savvy people. So, um, so there's that. Also, um, if not having an HDMI port on the device was, um, was something that, uh, was putting you off from buying it, um, it has one and it works. You can, you can output a display. You can, you can, like I showed earlier in, in this video, you can output the device to a display and do what you want with it. You know, whether it's installing a desktop operating system on it or, or just having a monitor hooked up for terminal purposes, the HDMI port on this works. So, um, with that said, I would love to know, uh, your follow-up thoughts to this follow-up video to find out, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this, uh, what their, their answer, uh, having it in there. I just, I would love to know your thoughts on the whole, on the whole ordeal. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I think they will definitely be watching this video and, um, and hopefully paying attention to the comments that are available in, or the, the comments that you guys leave down in that comment section. Um, really hoping that you guys will, will take an opportunity uh, like you did in the first video to let me and them know what your thoughts are on having the HDMI port, but having it hidden. So I'm going to wrap this up. I, again, I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.